Salam everyone. Let's talk some history. In the Quran, we all know it is mentioned that jinns existed before Adam and Islam. They inhabited the earth and caused enough bloodshed for Allah to send down an army of angels to defeat them. But let's have a look into this story in a bit more detail, with not just the Quran as a source, but other medieval and religious sources. Firstly, let's talk about their beginnings. According to old Muslim legends and al khazwini a Persian geographer and cosmographer, the first jinn was created from Simum, or scorching hot desert wind, and he was called Asum bin Jan Darnushi. He and his descendants were given dominion over the earth before Adam. Some say that they ruled for over 25,000 years, others say just 2,000 years. There's always a difference in the years, but the fact of the matter is, they existed before Adam. So Asum and his descendants ruled over the earth for this long period of time, but became corrupted. At this moment in Jinn history, you could say, the Jinn multiplied to a staggering number and had 72 kings ruling over them, each bearing the royal title of Suleiman. Now Suleiman in religious sources is the prophet of Allah son of Daud and the ruler of Bani Israel. But the difference here is that it is a title given to a Jinn king. Now the only source for this would be in the book Islamic Legends, Histories of Heroes, Prophets and Saints by Jan Napad, 1985. It is also important to note that according to old legends and poems, there were 72 Jinn kings under the leadership of Suleiman meaning they served under Suleiman when Allah gave him dominion over the jinn kind. It could be that the name Suleiman was given specifically because they held power over the jinn, like a title when a person obtains some sort of power. But let's move on. The last of the Suleiman was a jinn king by the name of Jan Ibn Jan. Now, if you watch my earlier videos, I've mentioned a story about an interview with a jinn from Saudi Arabia. There, the jinn mentioned that he was from the Jan sect. Could he be a follower of Jan ibn Jan? But some believe it is an older form of the word jinn. Whatever the case, only Allah knows best. One important thing to note is many Egyptians and those that come from the Sahara Bedouins believe that the pyramids were built by Jan ibn Jan because they believe that such architecture could not have been built by humans. They wouldn't be the first people to claim this as famous Swiss author by the name of Eric von Daniken was a pioneer on the theory that an extraterrestrial or an advanced race existed for human beings and built many great things such as the pyramids. Now, am I saying that the jinns have built the pyramids? As far-fetched and bizarre as it sounds, it could be or it could not be, but that is a separate discussion for another day. During their reign over the earth, Allah sent down messengers to the jinn, whether they were prophets or righteous jinns. They were sent down to the jinn to correct them on the right path, yet they disregarded the teachings and fell into chaos and corruption. It is said that 25,000 years ago, Allah had enough of their corruption and destruction and sent down an army of angels to punish their jinns for their corruption. But what was the corruption? Ibn Kathir mentions in his book, Stories of Prophets, that another race of jinns existed called the Hin and Bin along with other races, Tim and Rin. He flirted with the idea that the jinns were persecuting and subjugating the other races and Allah had enough and decided to punish them. Something like this is possible because in my last video, the homeland of the jinns, I've explained that the jinn society is as complex as the human society. So the problems that we face are also similar problems that they could face, especially if different groups exist within their society. After the war, they came together and formed a small nation in the south of the world, wherever that is. Al-Harith, 
for his righteousness was elevated to the heavens along with the angels where he learned to mingle with them and eventually began teaching them and so Allah elevated his ranks however there are sources that claim that Al-Harith went down to the earth at some point in time and met with the remainder of the jinns after the war they accepted him into their ranks and he became known to them as Azazil he would always maintain connections with his jinn counterparts and eventually siding towards them when he was cast out of heaven and became known as Iblis. But let's talk more about Bin. Some scholars describe the Bin as a weak type of jinn which usually takes the appearance of a wild dog or other lesser animals. There were still the elemental beings known as the Hind who were associated with the elements of wind. Though they were made out of fire, like the bin and the jinn, they were associated with the element of wind and are said to have been able to fly as well. It has been agreed upon by religious scholars that a war between the angels and the jinns have said to have existed before the creation of man. In fact, Many cultures and religions substantiate this very fact. The Aztecs, the Nabataeans, the Babylonians, the Mesopotamians. All old cultures and religions have some sort of belief system that an ancient civilization existed before man was made. This is synonymous across most belief systems. Even in the modern world, this sort of idea is prevalent in the mainstream. I'll bet looked down upon, but it is still there. The most famous pioneer of this belief in the modern age would be Eric von Daniken, the Swiss author I talked about earlier. And he talks about this in the book Chariots of the Gods. Now this book explores the different origin myths of various civilizations and it flirts with the idea that they are all similar, that a race of unique beings existed on this planet or at least came to this planet before us and left their signs. But all of this brings us to these conclusive questions. Could the jinns have an impact on shaping society and culture as we know it? Could the jinns have an impact in shaping ancient human civilizations? These questions may be a stretch. But have an open mind and you just might be able to see the possibilities. As always, thank you. Jazakallah khair and may Allah bless you. Thank you.